Hey guys, what's up? It's Amy with Amy Reads YA, and today I am looking a hot mess because I am doing my hot mess emoji thon September wrap up. I actually haven't even completed a bingo, I don't think. So I'm not even going to talk about that. I'm just going to talk about what I read in September. We're going to put the whole bingo board emoji thon aside because I failed it. Like I do most readathons, but it gets me to read, and that's what's important. I thought in September I had a really bad month, but I actually had a really great month. I just didn't, I just didn't read books that I really loved. So I felt like I was slumping, but I was actually power reading, and I just wasn't really, really invested in what I was reading. Uh, good girl. I managed to read. 11 books this this month and I don't know how I did that. So I'm just gonna go through what I read, not probably not give a major synopsis of it because I think with 11 books that would be incredibly long. So the first book I read in the month of September was The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. Now if you've been following along with my weekly vlogs you probably know how I feel about this book. I wanted to love it I did not love it at all. I gave it two stars. I didn't care about the characters and that's my biggest. I'm such a character driven reader that if I don't care about the characters I'm not going to care about the story. The story I didn't think was good. I, I wanted a fairy tale and what I got was a book about fairy tales that you never even really got to get to know. So. I, that just was a total flop for me. I gave it two stars. I think I was being generous with it. But typically if I read a book all the way through and I don't like it, I'll give it two stars because at least I got through it. And that says something. So, The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. Unfortunately, I do not recommend. It is, however, especially the Alcrate edition, it's very beautiful. So there's that. Silver Linings. The next book I read, which I don't, I don't even know where it is. <laughs> I thought I had it over here, was Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. That is the first book in the Throne of Glass series. I gave it four stars. I think I'm being a little bit stingy with my stars. As I was going through my Goodreads, I was like, wow, that was harsh. Throne of Glass, I'm probably leaning more towards four and a half stars with this one. Um, I didn't tear through it the way that I think I have torn through some of Sarah J. Mass's other books, but I did really like it. I love Selena. I am very excited to continue on with that. So I gave it four stars. The next book is the only five star read I had for this month, and that was The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. I half listened, half read this book, and I enjoyed it the whole way through, but the ending is what really pushed me to five stars. I just, that letter was amazing. I cried and I, I did really, really enjoy the audio. Unfortunately, I, I'm blanking on who did the audio, but I will link that below because, or I will post that below because it's very important. Audio can make or break a story, in my opinion, and it definitely helped make this one. So the only five star read of the month was The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. The rest I either don't have physical copies of or don't even have any copy of because they were library. So this is going to get real boring. All right, the next book that I read was Confessions of a Teenage Leper by Ashley Little. And if you can see that, I don't know if it's going to adjust, if it's going to be. So it was an advanced copy, so it did not come with the cover. The cover that I got was, the, was, was that, which is going to be blurry because my camera is not set on autofocus. Um, Confessions of a Teenage Leper, I gave it three stars. There were things about it that I really liked and things about it that I, I hated. And I did talk about this in the, in my weekly vlog, but I will, I'm going to talk about it now because I think it's important. <laughs> um, Confessions of a Teenage Leper follows a very, very, everything about teenage girls that you dislike is our main character. She is full of herself. She 
only cares about herself and her friends and her looks and other people's looks and she's just very very unlikable <laughs> and she's very problematic there is a transition in the book it's not a full transition but given that she's a teenage girl I think that the transition that we saw was was big and meant that she was on her way to being a much better person there are well first of all uh, calling someone a leper is not socially acceptable really the term is Hansen's disease um, the author actually puts a note in like you know I I called this book what I called it and I had the content that I had because I wanted to show how ignorant our main character is so she actually did put like a footnote of like an apology if she offended anybody but the the intent was to show what a horrible girl our main character started as but she's very problematic she's fat shaming she's a bigot she's making fun of everybody's looks um you know her brother is discovering his sexuality she's making jokes about that and at the end there's never a full apology but there's remorse so it, it's up in the air anyway I gave it three stars the next the next book that I read is one that I do not have because I listened to the audio and that was The Good Girl by Mary Kubica I gave that one four stars but thinking back about it I don't know if I really liked it four stars worth but I gave it four stars at the time so let's roll with it and that follows a girl who is abducted and figuring out who her abductor was and what the story behind her abduction was. It's told in three perspectives, the um, detective on the case, the mother of the missing girl, and the uh, abductor. So, pretty good. Um, if you like thrillers and stuff, I, I recommend it. It's not what you think it is which is exciting so four stars the next book is another one i do not have the cover of because it was an advanced copy and that is <laughs> twice dead by caitlin seal i gave this two stars and i kind of want to amend that to three stars it's unfair to give something a bad rating just because it's subject matter that you're not particularly interested in I feel like I feel like giving a low rating should be because the writing's bad or the character building's bad or the world building's bad not because it's just a subject matter that's not your favorite twice dead packed a lot of information into its first book it is about a girl who was she's from another country or land than where she, the story takes place and basically her views are that necromancy is a bad thing and she's in a land where necromancy is alive and well and being practiced her father sends her on a mission she ends up killed and brought back to life by a necromancer to in order to help complete this mission she finds about she finds out that her father is not who she thought he was he's actually involved in spies and this whole political scheme 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 <laughs> she finds out her father is involved in this whole like political scheme kind of thing um espionage not really my thing political mess not really my thing so it was a little bit difficult. I really enjoyed the romance and I think that it's going to end up going somewhere interesting but for me I'm not going to be quick to jump on the sequel of this book but if you like political in like I don't even know what the word is. If you like like political infiltration and books about like corrupt politics and things like that then you might be interested in this. It's just not for me. The next book I listened to, so I don't have it, but I will definitely buy a physical copy, is The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. I gave that four stars. I kind of want to amend and give it five. I loved this book. I loved the audio. The audio put music and atmospheric 
things into it and I really enjoyed it. I hate the name of the book, but I love Holly Black, so it was great. Also, there's a really, really good kiss scene, which is not typically my thing, but I loved this kiss scene. So, The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. It's about vampires and the normalization-ish of vampires. The next book that I read, admittedly I did not fully read, I kind of just skimmed through it and I gave it a, a three star rating and I gave it a three star rating because I feel like it's not fair for me to give it a rating, like a... Okay, I'll just go into what it is. The book is um, the Trans Teen Survival Guide and that's by Owl and Fox Fisher and I requested it from NetGalley and I requested it at the same time that I can I requested Confessions of a Teenage Leper and the reason that I requested it is because in my mind I I didn't realize that it was a nonfiction. So I thought that it was because on my NetGalley I don't have YA nonfiction as one of my like grabs. So I I honestly thought that it was in line with Confessions of a Teenage Leper. I thought it was like a YA contemporary, you know, um, how so many books have like confessions and survival and like those sort of things. So that's my bad on my part. I would not have requested it had I realized that it was nonfiction. I would have definitely left that request for somebody who, who needs this book because it's a very important book and it starts at the very, very beginning, like what is trans and what how do you define it and how do you and it literally takes it from the beginning all the way up to you know it goes through coming out to your friends family co-workers parents what to do if it doesn't go the way that you hope that it will go how to deal with the negative responses um, it had examples of coming out stories. It had a wealth of information, um, help helplines, websites with references. Like it was, it's a very, I really recommend it for middle grade who are questioning, you know, their gender identity, um, and who they are. It. It reads like a middle grade, which is why I'm recommending it for middle grade. And I think that the the a little bit older crowd may not need the definition of what is trans. But maybe, I don't know. Because it can be very, very confusing. As a cis white female, it can be very confusing. So as a, you know, male or female who is trying to figure out who they are, it can be wildly confusing. The next book that I read was How Far We Go and How Fast, which if you've watched my vlogs, you know that I struggled with the title of that book for a long time. And I also, it took me about most of the month to read it. And here's a picture. I actually did get a picture of that cover. Um, now this is by Nora Dector and this came out on September 25th. I gave it three stars and I gave it three stars because I didn't know what it was about the majority of the time I think it took to like 80 I think it took to like 80 percent for what the actual book was about to come out and I don't want to give too much away because I think that that's kind of part of why I ended up liking it more but once it comes out what it's about you're like okay because the, t the, the heavy subject matter of this is everybody handles it differently and it's very hard to pinpoint what it could be. So it had some great quotes. Um, I didn't really care much for the main character, but I did overall like the characters. And like I have said, it's important for me to feel strongly one way or the other about characters. And I did overall like every character involved. The main character was just she was going through some shit, so you know, I'll give her a pass. The next book I read, I just finished up yesterday, and that is, ooh, I can't see. Oh my goodness, whatever. That is Me and Me by Alice Cupers, Cupers, and for, 
this is an advanced book that comes out on Tuesday, October 2nd. But I believe it has already been released in Kindle format. It's just being released in hardcover now, or maybe there's a paperback. There's definitely been some version of this book released. Anyway, it's a book about parallel universes. And I just don't think that you should ever try to write a contemporary about, I mean, or even a fantasy. I know that V.E. Schwab has successfully written something about parallel universes. I haven't read it yet, so I gotta get on that. But this is a YA contemporary about a girl who has this traumatic event one day and then the follow what follows is she starts getting weird messages on her phone that look like something that she would say or she would do or about someone she knows and she's like what the hell is going on and it's very confusing because it kind of bounces and you don't know right away you don't know which version of our main character you're getting also just a side note the main character's name is Lark and she's a singer which is just like so on the nose it's not clever to me and she's a god awful person I can't stand her the most self-absorbed character I think I've ever read I did not like her at all but I didn't like her in the way that it made me not like the book not like I hate her so much I love her that being said she so the format's confusing the subject matter is confusing because parallel universes are confusing as all hell the romance kind of sucked because at the end they threw in something super problematic and it like never gets resolved and I don't really know what happened and basically I just don't know what happened it was an easy read so I got it out of the way um but I gave it two stars and that's being generous. It's definitely more like one and a half. But like I said, if I make it through a book I, that I don't like, I usually give it two stars because at least I made it through. The last book I read, I actually finished up this morning and it was recommended by Riley and I'll link her channel below. She, I don't know what she does. This girl comes up with all kinds of book recommendations and they're like always good, it seems like. This is, uh, I don't know if you can read it. It says the, the title is Evidence of the Affair and it's by Taylor Jenkins Reid, who I believe wrote The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And this is a short story, like it says, um, and it follows two spouses, not each other's spouses, two spouses who find out that their spouses are cheating on them with the other and they send letters back and forth about 20% into it I felt so sick to my stomach and uncomfortable reading this it's heartbreaking what people do to each other. it's heartbreaking what people do to each other and like I actually like it so easy it's like a 40 minute read it's like maybe an hour read I don't know it didn't take me very long at all and it's it's very good and it's very emotional and it's just crazy how such a short book can impact you so hard that is evidence of the affair by taylor jenkins reed i gave it four stars and again it could be more uh, uh, why do i even write anything i don't know okay so i only had one dnf this month the one book that i did decide to dnf at least for this point in time is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I was listening to this. I, I read some and I listened to some and I went on to a Facebook group that I'm in and I was like, hey guys, does anyone else feel the way that I feel? I feel like this book is so loved and I'm missing something. And I got a handful of people who were like, no, I felt the same way. And then a couple of people who were like, try the audio. And I'm like, damn it, I am trying the audio and it's not working. So now I'm really screwed. So I forget exactly where I was. I want to say I was right around 50%, but it, I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't really care about the character. Like, I don't care at all about Laszlo. Like, he just doesn't do anything for me. I did like the one, oh my god, I forget her name. Was it Sarai? I think I liked Sarai, um, the one with the moths whatever her name was. I did really enjoy her character, but I just, I don't, I don't 
care enough to continue on because it's a heavy book it's definitely a challenging book and it just didn't do it for me so at least for now I put this one down there are three books that I'm currently in the middle of um, that I should finish next month and the first one is Three Dark Crowns by Kendare Blake I am mm -mm -mm. let's see where am I I am I have this much left so I should be finishing this soon but again it's not getting me the way that I wanted it to I thought I was going to love this book and I don't dislike it at all but it's so character heavy that I'm having trouble keeping track like who's the witch like well I, witches because that's what they're called on the mainland but who are the sisters who are the sisters keepers like I keep getting them all confused and it's making it a little bit more difficult than I thought it would be to get through this so I like it I don't love it I'll finish it this month three dark crowns the other two books I have outlander which I have I read about half of it and now I've got the audio from the library so and I love the audio I'm loving the audio and I'm lo I'm loving the book it's just a lot again it's it's like Stranger Dreamer it's a lot of subject matter so it's slow going the last book that I am currently reading which I hope to finish um, tomorrow but I probably won't I think I'm only like 20% in is can't really see it it's After the Fire by Will Hill. I gotta be honest, I had no idea what this book was about going into it. It's about a cult, and I had no idea. A cult being broken down and trying to get through to the children and make them understand that what they were living was terrifying and should not be happening. It's uncomfortable. Anyway. <laughs> After the Fire by Will Hill, I'm really enjoying it. It is the third book I am currently reading, and yeah. That is all I've got for you guys on my September wrap-up. What did you guys read? Did you read any of these books? How did you feel about them? If you like the things that I bring to this community, please like, comment, and subscribe down below. All my social media is down there. You can follow that. And that's all I got, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.